Hi, this is Sue from Create for Journals, and I just wanted to show you quickly how I use the Bingo Generator from Bearwood Labs, and it's on sale this Black Friday weekend. And I just want to show you like how I use it and how easy it is to, to generate all of your bingo cards. And you can sell this as PLR if you wish to. So once you have installed the um, add-in, you will come up to this top tab here where it says add-ins and then you'll see the bingo creator is right here. So you would start off by just inserting a template. So insert new bingo template, and you can see here, we can go from three by three up to 10 by 10. So you just choose whichever one you want and insert the table. And then what you would do here is come back here, insert additional table. This is going to insert this part here. I like to just put in a couple extra images um, just so that it can mix up the cards a little bit more. And it depends on how many cards that you're going to generate. If you're only going to generate like up to 10, then I just leave these ones here. But if I'm going to do like 30, if I'm putting this on Teachers Pay Teachers and I want to have bingo cards for a whole class, then I'll put in some extra images because I want to create 30 or 40 bingo cards. Now, this just generates the bingo card. It doesn't do the calling cards and the tokens. So just want to make sure that, um, you know, that you um, understand that. So what I do first is I generate the table, then I pull and resize the table so it looks nice on the page. And I just want to do the first page first. And then you're going to put the title, whether it's just bingo or whether you want to put a title on top of here. Um, just make sure that everything looks nice first because once you generate it, it's going to duplicate this layout through all the cards. And if you don't do it right, either you generate it again or you have to go through and edit 30 cards, which we don't want to do. We're trying to save time here. So I have this um, set up here and I have the free one. Again, you can put the word free, you can put a different star, different icon in there, whatever you would like to do. So all you do is um, you're going to insert your clip art. Now, the one thing that you want to be very careful of is when you insert clip art that we make sure we are away from this red border or whatever color your border is. Um, because if this touches the borders, when it goes to generate the cards, you're either going to get double images or you're going to get an empty square. So you have to just make sure that it's not touching any um, uh, any of these uh, table outlines. And the other thing I found helpful to do was put all the clip art that I want to use in this bingo template into its own folder. So when you do the calling cards, it's easy to remember which ones you've used for the bingo game. And then you can just create the calling cards. So you will literally just um, come in here and just you know, add in the calling cards. And then what I'm doing now is I'm just saving this as a copy. Once I've had it and I'm happy with the way it looks, I just file, make a copy, and then I can do my new winter Valentine's, whatever bingo card I want to do. And I'm just using the same layout and I'm using, and all my images are sized. So it's just pretty much replace the images and everything is going to fit in there nicely. So this is all you would do here was click the image, come up to picture format, change picture and then on your device go find the folder with the new clip art make sure it looks nice sometimes you do have to use the crop function up here and you would just resize the image again you want to make sure nothing is hidden this uh, the table outline and then on this one too the same thing just make sure everything is in the middle here and then this will pick everything up so if you have to resize it just a little bit you pull it down to make sure nothing is hidden in the edges. So you can see what we've done there. Um, and then once you're happy with it, what you do is you come back to the add-in, the bingo, and then you just generate the bingo card. So you tell it how many pages, I uh, keep the center as the free space. Now, if you had um, a title that shouldn't be, um, that's inside the table, like a header title, then you would want to check mark this box as well. Um, I don't do that. I just put my own title in. I find it easier. And then here it's going to tell you a three by three table is created, 15 bingo cards, eight from the main and seven from the additional will be shoveled to create the slides. If there's any warnings, it will tell you that something isn't quite right or if you've got 10 images but you want 20 cards, it might tell you only 12 cards are going to be generated because each card needs to be um, unique. So this way, then you know you have to come and uh, add in more clip art in this side. 
and the advanced one. I just keep this check mark so that any text is, um, it just stays the way it is. It doesn't get um, screwed or anything up there. So and then once you're ready to generate the number of pages, you just click OK and it will generate all the pages. Now, what I did with this one, because now I like the layout that I have, so I just make a copy of this one. And then what I would basically do once I've made a copy, copy is I would come in here and just delete from 2 to 11. I would delete all these slides and then I would take the first one, change the clip art, change any colors and then generate the new bingo game. So that's how I do this one. And then what I've also found is um, I created like just a four by four grid for the calling cards. Now it's up to you if you want to put the name in there or not. And again, I just changed the outline. I, I just changed the clip part. And when you have this set up after the first run, what you can do is as you insert the image into the main card, you can come down and insert it into the calling card area at the same time. So it just kind of saves you a little bit of time there. And then again, if you want the title, if not, you would just take it out. And then, uh, so you create as many, um, and I try and do like four by f like four on a page and make the number even so that, you know, you don't have a page that only has one. Well, this one, we've just, there's one empty square here. So that's how it would look in the end. And then when I did for this one, I just made circles with an image inside. So, and to change all those images at one time, all you do is just highlight everything. You can see they're all selected. You would come to picture format, change picture, go find a picture, and all of these are gonna change at one time. And then you can um, do the same thing. You can go over to the shape format, shape outline, and you can just come and easily change whatever shape outline to a different color that you want. Um, so I usually give out like three pages of the tokens and now I put a snowflake in that one. And this one is just a plain one. Again, the same thing. Highlight them all, come to shape format, shape fill, and then just whichever color you want, everything's gonna change and then you do the outline. And then what I found too is that we can leave these pages in there when it generates the cards. It's not going to um, like mess anything up. So that, again, it saves me time because I've got the cards sorted. I've got my token layout ready and it's just a matter of going in there, changing images, changing the colors and it's done. And then once you're ready with this, you would just download it as a PDF and we're ready to go. And when you download it as a PDF, I've got the flat pack installed as well. Um, and that's from the uh, the same Bedwood, Bearwood lab. So you could just save it as a PDF here. But what's nice about the, the flat pack is if I had any actual links in here, um, I can keep the links active even though I'm like flattening that's what flat pack does it flattens everything here so when your customer gets this as a pdf file they can't go in and extract any of the images and you'll see in a lot of the licensing we need to flatten the images so that's a great way to do that um, and so those two if you're going to buy any two tools for powerpoint then i would buy those and just be um aware that on flat pack there is a windows version and there's a mac version so buy the one that you need for your uh, particular um, computer. So that's how I use the bingo generator card. And if you have any other questions, um, please let me know and I'm happy to answer them. And again, this is Sue from Create for Journals and thank you so much for watching.